Jesus. Just wonder if they're getting a little too involved. It's one of the players involved there. That looks like Im Zaman Mulhak has gone into the crowd. Now that's very, very unusual. I just wonder if he's taken the law in his own hands. Hey, that is very, very ugly. I'm afraid it's not looking good at all. I don't think it's just the match referee is going to be having a close look at it. Uh, just someone in charge of the law might do. Now, I, I saw Im Zaman running across there, telling Akib Jabba that he'd much rather field at fine leg rather than uh, Akib. I didn't realize it was because he actually wanted to go into the stands. This is sensational, and I'm not sure it's the best thing to have happened. Well, I can't believe that uh, he's gone in there unless somebody has provoked him. Somebody has said something or thrown something at him. I don't think he's the type of... He, he's more a gentle giant, he's in Zimam. I call him as luck, he's upset. Yeah, somebody's wound him up. I don't care what he uh, say. It's not nice to go in the crowd, I agree, but somebody's upset him. He's not good at all, uh, Jeffrey. I've seen India-Pakistan matches played at to various places. There's always a needle in the crowd. We see that at Sharjah, we've seen that at Singapore, and both in India and Pakistan. And there's always, at any given moment in an India-Pakistan match, somebody somewhere in the stands is saying something provocative. And that's the reason why, as Ravi and uh, Wasim will tell you, you've got to keep your cool at all times. Now, here at Toronto, we've had something unusual, which I've never seen before at uh, any of these matches, and that's the use of loudspeakers and these megaphones now that's the one you're seeing there now and on that megaphone you're actually audible very clearly even as far away as we are at, in the commentary box and out there for the players it's it's very very audible and uh, just sometimes sometimes it, it really gets to you though uh, I, I just wonder as you said uh, i've seen Inzaman play a few times myself jeffrey you've seen him very often he's not the kind who's, who's normally provoked and it must have been something uh, very silly and um, really very provocative. Well, it's obviously upset him greatly. He lost his cool, lost his temper. Well, I've seen him bat, he's a wonderful batsman. I don't know how good a boxer he is, but he's obviously in the crowd there, gonna try it out. But what sometimes also happens, uh, Jeffrey, especially... I think somebody's insulted him. I can only think something, I don't know what would make a Pakistani player lose his cool and he is still very agitated and Ramiz is trying to calm him down but there's no doubt to me something happened there something was said or something was thrown well I think that's the most sensible thing he's going off you can't have a hot head out there on the field it's better he goes back just relaxes, maybe ponders over what he's done. And then come back onto the ground and show that uh, he's still game to play cricket. But I've seen a uh, few very tense situations in India-Pakistan match, but I've never seen anyone actually getting provoked like that. I remember Sylvester Clark went into the crowds in a game in Pakistan once and threw a brick back at someone who'd thrown one at him. But I don't quite think there was uh, a physical uh, provocation here. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that uh, Inzamam is uh, going to go back and uh, cool his heels for a while. Well, the operative word there is how she was saying he doesn't think, but we don't know until the full facts come out. Let's keep a little bit of an open mind. It didn't look too clever, a player going into the crowd to argue with the spectators. It didn't look too good, uh, the player Inzamam picking up uh, the bat. We need a little cooling off period. Surprises me just a little bit because uh, if there are any two teams anywhere in the cricket world who are used to having uh, the most insulting, the most nasty things said to them at all times, it's India and Pakistan. Now the umpires are going out there and uh, this is suggesting that uh, they should calm the crowd down. We've seen a few situations like this in India and Pakistan and the best best thing sometimes to do is, is one of the players, one of the really popular players to go out there and say, hang on, we need to get the game going. Now what I want to know, are they Indian supporters or Pakistani supporters? No, I don't know. That's interesting. Who are they supporting? Who are they chanting at? Oh, 
Well, there's certainly nothing happened in the cricket to provoke that sort of reaction. Well, the other players would certainly be a bit sobered by uh, what has happened. Ramiz Raja certainly has been an outstanding ambassador, Jeffrey, for uh, cricket in Pakistan. He, he brought a Pakistan team over to India. And at the best of times, it can be provocative when you go to each other's countries. There's Jackie Hendricks down there now, having a word with Steve Randall, just checking out with the umpires what actually happened. Now, he needs to know whether Inzaman was the one who actually ran into the crowd first, whether he was provoked, because then that comes into the ambit of uh, the match referee. Because um, I think the two, the two uh, law enforcement agencies involved there, one is the actual the policeman at the grounds, the other is Jackie Hendricks, the match referee. And experience as he is, I'm not quite sure Jackie Hendricks has seen anything like this before. Well, I have been involved in a couple of riots in my time. One was at Jamaica in 1968, Colin Cowdery's England tour to West Indies. So was, was the captain for West Indies. And I was also in Pakistan when England played one in 78. There's been a few things thrown um, on the ground. But I just think, Jeffrey, I, I'm not sure whether anything that was said or done hasn't actually happened before on a cricket ground now. I just get the feeling that the players have decided they're going to come off. I wonder if that's a decision taken by the match referee or whether it's a decision taken by the local law enforcement agencies. Well, the umpires have started to walk off. That is very significant is that uh, Steve Randell, uh, the umpires, he started to walk with Jackie Hendricks, the match referee, on his left. There he is, Jackie Hendricks is walking away from the incident area towards the dressing rooms. So he's one of the umpires. So uh, the players have followed suit. It's interesting because the match was uh, poised at, um, at a very good stage. India 45 for one. The bowlers were doing a decent job. India were having to graft round for runs. Batting not very easy. Having to chase 117 runs. All of a sudden, something absolutely unbelievable has happened. One of the things you've got to do if you're an international cricketer is to be able to time the ball very well to be able to bowl well, but you've also got to be able to handle yourself very well. And as a result of that provocation, everyone is uh, having to go in, and we're going to be taking a bit of time off uh, here. Very little cricket being played just now, and I think it's left uh, the rest of the crowd looking just a bit stunned. I imagine it would, if you're, if you're sitting in the crowd and you get uh, someone suddenly walking into you and someone as big as Inzamam, I think the rest of the crowd is going to be a bit stunned. Jackie Hendricks now having a word with Madan Lal. Now, looking at this, Jeffrey, from a purely cricketing point of view, Madan Lal is the Indian coach. He won't be very happy with the fact that the teams are having to go off and his team had acquired some momentum. Well, the most, one of the most important men there is David Richards. He's the chief executive of the ICC. And uh, he's come over to watch this series of matches. They're official matches under the ICC banner. So as chief executive, he's come to have a look. And he comes to see today, and uh, the match is stopped through an unfortunate disturbance. He's talking to the match referee, Chucky Hendricks, talking to one of the umpires, Steve Randell. They're the people will decide what will happen. Not the players, not the captains, not the coaches either. Those three gentlemen there, and Steve Buckner, who is somewhere, one of the umpires is Steve Randell. They will decide. And I'm assuming nothing. I don't know what happened in that crowd, but something happened with the crowd in Inzimam to help him lose his cool. 
so often, uh, Jeffrey, we've noticed when we had these odd disturbances in India that uh, very often the best way, unless it's a really nasty situation, the best way to diffuse it all is to just get the bowler bowling at the batsman and they've got something else to cheer about, something else to think about. And so often uh, it, it tends to diffuse situation, though uh, it's really for the law enforcement people to be thinking about, but uh, it's worked before. Yes, I think... Uh, I think to start the game would be a good thing. Uh, keep in Zimam in the dressing room, put the 13th man on, because they've already got the 12 through Salim Malik being injured. Get on with the game. It's a tiny section of a tiny area of the ground that's erupted. It's one player. That one player has been uh, asked in a nice way to go and cool off in the dressing room. And I think the rest of the people want to see the finish of this cricket match I think the sooner the uh, chief executive of the ICC the match referee and the umpires can decide to get on with the game the better for cricket there's that little mini conference Jackie Hendricks Steve Randell David Richards And uh, while they're all engaged in some rather serious matters, as so often happens, the band has decided that uh, they don't mind using this little opportunity to uh, inject a bit of life into the proceedings of a slightly different kind. Certainly haven't been short of action, but uh, this is a slightly different kind. Music to soothe the nerves. They've been at it for a better part of yesterday and today. They're a uh, very disciplined band, that's one we're putting in. You see steel bands in all parts of the world, in Sri Lanka, all over in the West Indies, they just tend to be a lot livelier. And that's a huge Pakistan flag that's uh, been around. So this match has never really been short of, uh, short of support on either side. Now I think uh, a few saner elements in the crowd are suggesting that uh, if everything cools down, we can get to see a cricket match. Come to think of it, that's what we're all here for, to see a cricket match. As uh, Jeffrey Boycott said, uh, you don't really know what the provocation was. It's very easy to play judge, so we uh, won't quite do that just now. But the fact remains that... Uh, Somebody said something. The person who apparently crossed the provocation, that's certainly the man that Inzaman went after, is the man with the loud hailer. Now, what, what is tragic is that this gentleman with the loud hailer had been around for a very long time. It had been largely good-humoured all along. But um, suddenly something provocative happened. Now, Jackie Hendricks is going there. What we're going to do here on the telecast is, uh, while uh, the discussions continue about uh, when play should, in fact, begin, We'll try and uh, bring you the latest. It's really, as Jeffrey Boycott is saying, a very few, lost, small number of people that were involved there. I, I'd make it less than 100, something like 30 or 40 people were uh, involved over there. I really just get the feeling that uh, might just be overdoing things over here. Jeffrey Boycott is... Uh, Left us in the commentary box is uh, someone who's played in front of crowds all over the world. And I can tell you if your name is Ravi Shastri, your name is Wasi Makram, we've played before some of the most provocative crowds in the world. With me is uh, Wasim. Wasim is a bit tough when, you, when you're uh, in front of a provocative crowd? It's definitely tough uh, to play under pressure. Uh, but I think what exactly happened was I was just in a, I was just in a dressing room with Inzamam. And he, I asked him, Inzi, what happened? Because Inzamam is the calmest guy we have in Pakistan team. And he never gets angry. He's very calm and very cool. Uh, that guy over there was swearing at him with the microphone for the last couple of hours. And you just can't take it. We are, we are here, the players are here to play cricket to both sides. They can't just get swearing all the time. Now, this is the man uh, with the megaphone. As I said, he'd been, uh, been using it for the better part of two days. But as Wasim just reports, uh, sometimes it, when it gets a bit personal, it can get very damaging, can't it? It does. I was having a word with Azruddin yesterday and uh, uh, he, he went through the same thing. 
and Inzi just couldn't take it. Inzi said he was uh, swearing at me for the last two hours, and that's a bit too much. I think they should what they should do just to ban the megaphones to bring it to the ground. It happens all over the world. It should happen here as well. A lot of people who have come to grounds, and uh, they believe that uh, they have some kind of right to be able to have a go at the cricketers. Really, they should be there only to watch cricket. They can have a go as at a cricketer on his cricket abilities. They can't just have a go on his family, on his uh, personal uh, background. So that's a bit too much. You can't just take it. That's not on. They should just ban megaphones for good. And yet, uh, Wasim, is this, is this something that's uh, never happened anywhere else in the world? I mean, as, as people who play in front of passionate crowds, you've probably experienced this uh, wherever you've played. It never happened. I think megaphones are just allowed it in this part of the world. Now, from after today, they should realize megaphones are not just on. The players can't concentrate while they're batting and getting swearing from the crowd all, all around. Plus, if you're losing, pressure gets on. And plus, you are, they're, they're having a go at you for the last two and a half hours, three hours. And that's not on. And Inzamam definitely lost, uh, uh, lost his calm, definitely. But he said whatever he thought at that time, he did the right thing. Um, megaphones, of course, uh, is, is one part of the problem, uh, Wasim, because it allows everyone to listen to, uh, to what, you, what you're saying. But uh, people who, who provocate, who sort of provoke you in the crowd, that, uh, that tends to happen uh, all over the world. Do you think one of the aspects of modern cricket is to be able to uh, take a rough with the smooth? Now, it's starting to get just a bit ugly uh, in the crowd because I think just a bit of a scuffle breaking out, which is uh, not too good for the game. But Wasim, do you think that's, that's one of the requirements of modern cricket, that it should be a little, more th should be a little thick skin, or uh, is that one of the tragedies of the modern game? It's definitely one of the tragedies of modern game. The, pressure, the players are under pressure anyway. There's no point just get, having a go at him all the time. They are just here to re represent their countries, and they are giving 100%. Nobody's losing because they want to lose. Everybody wants to win. But I believe the best team, best team will win on the day, and that's everybody's trying their best. Although Pakistan is te Pakistan team is not playing well today, but I believe they can always come back, and this thing is just not on. They have to ma ban the megaphones. I guess, uh, Wasim, it's very easy for people like me to be wise sitting here for about 100 yards away. But uh, now that everything is cooled down, what, what would be the best way to react to a prov provocation like that? Now, the gentleman's being led out of the ground, and hopefully sanity will prevail. But uh, do you think there could be another way of getting about it? Uh, maybe, maybe speak to the match referee, speak to the law enforcement people, say, look, this guy's been going at it for too long. Yeah, I think so. Match referee should look at the crowd. If somebody's having a go at a player on uh, his family, and uh, he should just tell the police to go and have a look on that guy. And I think uh, from now on today, uh, even cricket in Toronto, they should know that megaphones uh, should be banned. There shouldn't be uh, allowed any more megaphones for the future games. Certainly, that's the calmest that section of the crowd has been uh, for a while. What, what amazes me, Wasim, in fact, what really staggers me is that the crowd here in Toronto, we've seen India Pakistan matches played in each other's countries, in Sharjah, in England. The crowd here in Toronto, till about two hours ago, as you say, was, was pretty good humored about it all. It was building up. Uh, I was with the players last night. It was building up. Uh, it was going on from yesterday's game. They had a go at Indian players and they had a go at Pakistani players. And I think this uh, it was coming up. This was coming up. But now, one thing we know for sure that we should do something about uh, to stop this sort of uh, incidents not happening anymore. So, uh, Madan Lal with the uh, Indian think tank over there. And uh, we hope, we believe that uh, we should have play starting at, uh, at some stage. Till such time as, as play begins, we'll take uh, here from the Toronto Cricket Club just a short break. <laughs> 